When Mother, if I had seen you once or twice, or we are all one. We, we are so intricately connected, you know, one to the other. And what is lacking in one is expected to be added, uh, fulfilled by, by another. I'd like to share a brief thought, some brief thoughts this morning with us from the book of Luke. Luke's Gospel in chapter 7. Luke 7, verse 36, 36. One of the Pharisees desired him, that the Lord Jesus, that he should eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with, her t with the tears and did wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he knew, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a, a certain creditor which had two debtors. One owed 500 pence, and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said, Unto Simon, seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased kissing my feet. My head with all thou didst not anoint, but this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say, within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. I think this is a wonderful story, this is a wonderful portion we have before us. It tells of a Pharisee, and you know a Pharisee is one of those strict Jew. Supposedly they try to keep the law to the letter. But they go through all rituals and ceremonies. And here was this Pharisee. And he asks the Lord Jesus to come into his house for dinner, for lunch. And the Lord Jesus granted him that privilege. What a privilege it was for the Lord Jesus to have entered this particular house. But what we find here is that it was the custom, I'm told, in the Middle East in those days, I'm told that it's not like that today, because uh, there are automobiles, you have cars and taxis and that could take you from one place to the, to the other. But in those days, you have to walk. You walk the dusty roads. And so when you would be a guest in somebody's house, they would provide water for you to wash your feet, or they would wash your feet. But they would have this provision made 
specially for you, so that your, your feet would be clean as you enter the house. Here was this Pharisee who invited the Lord Jesus, but he did not provide that common courtesy. He did not provide water. But you know, water speaks to us of the word of God. Water that is not moving is a type of the word of God. But when we read of water that is in motion, the Lord Jesus says in John 4, to the woman at the well, I'll give you water that springs up into everlasting life. That speaks of the spirit of God. So here we have this, this Pharisee having the Lord Jesus in his house. Now he could have boasted to his friends that he had the Lord Jesus in his house. He could make a show to his colleague that, look, the Lord Jesus came and had dinner with me today. But there was no appreciation for the Lord Jesus. He did not provide the necessary convenience for him. But just as a show, he had him there. And yet the Lord Jesus obliged him the privilege of being there because he knew what would have transpired eventually. And so we find that this man shows so much indifference to the Lord Jesus being there. He just wanted to know that he is in his house. But you know, it's a privilege for us to have the Lord Jesus in our house, in our houses. You know, in, in, in John 12, we read of a family in Bethany who had the Lord Jesus in their house, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. The Lord Jesus would always resort to that house because he was welcome there. But here in this Pharisee's house, no welcome for him. And he says that, Scripture says say it here that, here was this woman was not invited. But she found herself there because the Lord Jesus was there. It says when she knew that the Lord Jesus was there, and that shows an act of faith, she heard and she acted on what she heard when she knew that the Lord Jesus was in this particular house. She went, even without invitation. Can you imagine I can, I can imagine that Pharisee as he, as he saw this woman in the house. And he knew her character. How he thought, what he thought within himself. As a matter of fact, he expressed that in his, in his thoughts. The Lord Jesus knew what he was thinking. But we find that this woman provided what the Pharisee neglected to have provided for the Lord Jesus. She did not come with a basin of water. She did not bring a towel, that which was lacking in the house. But it says that she came behind the Lord Jesus. Not so much as wanting to be seen. She came behind and she washed his feet with her tears. I can hardly conceive this. She cried so much, produced that which was lacking in that house. She produced it by herself. She washes the feet of the Lord Jesus. Not only that, but you know, Scripture states that after washing his feet, she didn't ask for a towel, but she, she used the hair of her head to wipe his feet. Can you imagine how low she had gone down to the floor to wipe his feet with her hair? That which is one's glory, the woman's glory. Scripture talks about the woman's hair being her glory. And we know how much time and effort goes into women's hair in making it, wanting to making it look good, presentable. I tell you, 
My wife works. I work. And every night, she would put those curls in. And the next day, prepare for work, she would take them out and and you know how every, all, every straw was tucked in <laughs> real nice and neatly. She's going out to work. She wants, she wants to look presentable, right? So I hardly get to enjoy much of that. What I get is it, the curls. That's what I come home to, right? When I get home at night, the curls are in again. <laughs> so I don't get to enjoy the, the beauty too much. But anyway, on Lord's Day, I can enjoy that. But here was this woman. The beauty, her beauty. She used that to wipe the feet of the Lord Jesus. Oh, how much. What an appreciation she had for him. That nothing was too expensive for her. It says she brought a box of a last, uh, 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 a Alabaska box of ointment, something that was costly. But to her, it was not too costly to have lavished that on the one whom she loved. She has come to love the Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisee says, this woman is a sinner. And you know, that's whom the Lord Jesus came into this world to save. Not the self-righteous one who would despise and reject him. He came to save sinners, bring to repentance. And so this woman, though a sinner, but yet she knows the grace of God. She would have realized it that day in this house where a lot of stuff was, missing, was, was lacking. No appreciation, but yet here is one who appreciated the Lord Jesus so much that her beauty was used as a towel. Can you imagine that? He says, uh, not only did she use her tears to wash his feet and her hair to wipe, to wipe it, the alabaster box of ointment was open and she used that to anoint, it, to anoint him. When the Pharisees saw that, he said, you know, if, if the Lord Jesus, he said, if this man knew were a prophet, he would have known what manner of woman this is that touched him. But that's, that's for whom the Lord Jesus came to save. The despised, rejected, those who were dead in sin and trespasses. Those are whom the Lord Jesus came to save. And I'm glad that he did because he saved me. And I'm glad for that. Jesus answered and said, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Now here, I believe when the Lord spoke to Simon, Simon must have thought, well, he's gonna, the Lord's now going to congratulate him for ha having him at his house. But the Lord says, in his house, he said, do you see a certain creditor had two debtors one owed him 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he whom he forgave most. The Lord says, yes, that is so. He says, do you see this woman? You did not provide the necessary convenience. But this woman, from the time I came into your house, has not ceased to wash my feet and to kiss them and to wipe it with the hair of her head. He says to her, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. And how we bless God for that. That the Lord Jesus can, has the ability to forgive sins. Or else we would have all been doomed for hell and destruction. But he came into this world to save sinners. The Apostle Paul says of whom he was chief. And if the chief is saved, 
then everyone else or anyone else can be saved. So he commends this woman for what she did to him and for him. He said, she said, he said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. He says, thy faith had saved thee. Go in peace. Here was the woman who came in as a sinner, but can leave this house as a saint. It's one who has known sins forgiven. And yet, in the very house, the Pharisee, we did not read that he made any confession. He remained in his state, in the state that the Lord met him. We believe that this man was condemned. But we thank God today that the gospel goes out to all. He that believeth is saved. But the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And I trust this morning that all of us here in this room are saved. That every one of us here knows the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And we can invite him in our houses. We have him in our houses. And what a privilege that is to have the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the one who came into this world, went to the cross of Calvary, where he died in our stead, in order to give us salvation. May our hearts be encouraged, even from this portion and these few remarks, though feebly expressed, may serve as a means of encouraging us to go on in service for the Lord in whatever little way we can. You know, we sometimes sing a little chorus that our light should shine, that it should not be hidden on the bu under our bushel. You know, when, when the light, when we allow the lights to shine, it moves the darkness away, and others can see, and it gives us a means of communicating to them the joy that we experience, the love and the peace that we have. May our hearts be encouraged this morning to live for him, for his name's sake.